This is the Clean Energy Minute, sponsored by Battery Mineral Resources, a company providing shareholders exposure to the supply side of the global electrification megatrend, while being focused on growth through cash flow, exploration, and acquisitions in favorable mining jurisdictions. The mission of Battery Mineral Resources, BMR, is the discovery, acquisition, and development of battery metals, namely cobalt, lithium, graphite, and copper, to become a premier and responsible supplier of battery minerals to the electrification marketplace. BMR is currently pursuing a potential near-term resumption of operations of a recently acquired and past copper gold producer in Chile. Also, BMR is the largest mineral claim holder in a historic cobalt silver camp in Ontario. It's time to follow BMR's five-prong approach to unlock shareholder value in the timely clean energy sector. This Clean Energy Minute has been sponsored by Battery Mineral Resources, U.S. trading symbol BTRMF, and in Canada, BMR. Web address, bmrcorp.com. The proceeding may contain forward-looking statements which may not be realized. This is CBS Eye on the World. I'm John Batchelor. Copper and civilization. You want to know how we're doing in the recovery from the pandemic? You watch the commodity copper price. Where does copper come from? In one place, most important, is Chile, the, the sovereign country of Chile, which I'm told is so rich in natural resources that if you kick a rock, you'll make money. I welcome someone who's helping recover copper, recover civilization, Martin Kostwick. He is the CEO of Battery Mineral Resources, a.k.a. BMR, traded in New York as BTRMF, traded in Canada as BMR. There's an exciting video I recommend to everybody to see what we're about to describe, how copper is made. The video is at bmrcorp.com. Martin, this is exciting to me because your drone video is genius. You take me to a copper mine that has been in the hands of major copper firms these last years, but now is coming back online in Chile, and you're making copper again as civilization demands it. So take me to the mine at Punitaki, Chile, and what it is that you're presenting in this video. What do I see? Good evening to you, Martin. Good evening, John. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Um, I, I, I'm very excited to to share with you what it is Battery Mineral Resources is, is doing in, in Chile. And just to orient you, the, the mine is located about a four and a half hour drive north of Santiago, Chile. Santiago, obviously a beautiful city in a beautiful country and, and the most prolific copper producing country in the world. And when you drive four, four and a half hours north of Santiago, you arrive in a town called Punitaki. And there's several communities around the area that service, uh, that, that, um, that live in and around the mine and the, and the processing plant that you see on the video. We're very happy to be a part of that community. The mine has about a 10 year operating history and we're, we're in the final throes of bringing the remaining capital we need together to put the mine back into production. Let me go into the video at the end and then walk backwards. We go into the mine itself, which is vast. It's a huge, it looks like the inside of a basketball arena for the NBA playoffs or something. And you're driving an enormous vehicle, a truck, down to where the mine is, meets the face of copper. You're taking rock out of Chile. It's an enormous mine and you're surrounded by walls of, of stone. You don't have any sense of, of claustrophobia whatsoever. But you take the rock out of the mine and put it in these huge trucks and then you take it to your processing plant. How much copper is in the rock that you extract from the surface, Martin? John, we have the, the main mine that supplied ore to the mill for around 10 years is called the Sanabrio Mine. And it is shown on the video. It was very well done, very well capitalized, done well by a major mining company called Glencore. The mine still has a lot of life left. The average grade, which we call it, uh, which is a, a description of the content of copper in the rock itself, is about 1% copper per ton. So one ton of rock has about 1% copper. All right. right and there. That's a yeah. lot. That's a rich That's a rich rock. We put the rock in the truck. Now take me to this elaborate processing plant. Reminds me of what I used to build when I was playing SimCity back 20 or 30 years ago. This connects to that, connects to this. What do we make? How do we take that 1% rock and turn it into something to ship to the world. Exactly. Once the mining portion is over, that rock is transported to the what we call the mill. It's the processing plant that takes that rock and upgrades it to a higher percent copper 
at the end of the at the end of the stage and delivers that to the marketplace. So what you're seeing is various stages of reducing the large rock into sequentially smaller rocks until we get it to a fine powder. And once that's into a fine powder form, there is a section of the video that shows the flotation cells. And that's simply big round tubs that you eject air into and there's an agitator in there and um, certain chemicals that allow the, the copper to attach to bubbles. And those bubbles bring the copper to the top in the form of a froth. That froth is then taken and it's dried out. And by the time we dry it out and put it in trucks to ship to the, to the refineries overseas, that is in the form of about 26% copper. So you go from 1% to 26%, this elaborate machinery. It really reminds me of a science fiction extraction from an asteroid. I knew it was chilly and I knew it and everybody walking around was human, but I could have believed that it was androids operating on this. It's an enormous construction as well in this vast, vast uh, area of Chile, um, mountainous with no trees that I could see on the, on the rock face, um, just a severe land, like a high desert. Is that what it's like uh, living there, Martin? You know, we should probably give a little different perspective of the veto because you wouldn't believe it, but we're actually, we're only about an hour's drive from the coast. So we're, we're about 600 meters above sea level in an area that's a very prolific, uh, wine growing region, believe it or not. So it's, it is very arid, but uh, like a lot of wine growing regions, they irrigate and, and it's just the, the, the soil and temperature conditions are perfect. So they, they grow Wine, wine grapes and also pisco grapes, which is the national, I guess you would say whiskey of, of Chile. So it's amazing. So we, we have roads, we have power, we have water infrastructure, and of course, uh, a ready and willing workforce. Let's look at the timeline. Glencore had it. Then there was a company from China that have it. Now you have it. What is the timeline in to getting that 26% copper loaded on the ships and headed to civilization? John, if we're successful with sticking with our own internal goals and the goals that I've relayed to shareholders, we hope to be financed for the remain, you know, to bring the remainder of the capital we need to put it into production by the end of March. And if that's the case, then we will be uh, immediately starting mining. And about four months later in July, August, we will start uh, producing copper from the processing plant. And from there on, it's ramping up to full run rate of about 25 million pounds of copper a year. It strikes me that Santiago is very pleased with you. Do you have good conversations with the government about what you're doing, bringing back prosperity to this region? John, we've had nothing but great uh, feedback and and great working relationships with the regulators, um, other people within the industry, suppliers. Uh, it, it's just amazing. Uh, Santiago is a very vibrant city. Copper is a big part of the economy down there. And um, both Santiago and locally, it's been very encouraging. It's, it's, it's an excellent place to work. And the workforce was there for 10 years and then there was no mine operating. Is the workforce coming back? These are artisans. Um, they're big shouldered artisans, I could see, but they seem very confident. Absolutely. There's, you know, of course, the, the mine has technical people and laborers and, and specialists and all kinds of, of, of employees. And with, with the fact that it did operate for about 10 years, it closed down in April of 2020. We actually have a list of everybody that worked there and we've been getting in touch with people. They're very excited with the prospect of, of being able to come back home and, and work and go home every night. And, and that's it. That's as simple as that. They're very excited. And the copper process itself, you have a history that you can help me. Uh, 10, 50, 100 years ago, would there have been anything at the scale of what I'm witnessing on that video? Is this all 21st century invention, Martin? Copper mining had, has, has been in Chile for, you know, uh, thousands of years, but always at a very small scale. Right. And, um, you know, something like this is, is quite modern. It's, it's new. You know, Chile came of age because of copper mining and, and other things. It's not the only, um, part of their GDP, but it's a big part, uh, really in the 1980s, John. And, and it's become a very successful country and, and copper has been a big part of it. Martin, Martin is helping me understand that process that winds up with civilization. You can measure how we're doing on the basis of the price of the co commodity copper. The company is BMR, Battery Mineral Resources. Martin Koswick is the CEO. BMR Corp 
Facebook.com is the website to enjoy the video. You want to know why we live so successfully? It begins with copper. I'm John Batch. You're listening to CBS Eye on the World with John Batchelor. This is the Clean Energy Minute, sponsored by Battery Mineral Resources, a company providing shareholders exposure to the supply side of the global electrification megatrend, while being focused on growth through cash flow, exploration, and acquisitions in favorable mining jurisdictions. The mission of Battery Mineral Resources, BMR, is the discovery, acquisition, and development of battery metals, namely cobalt, lithium, graphite, and copper, to become a premier and responsible supplier of battery minerals to the electrification marketplace. BMR is currently pursuing a potential near-term resumption of operations of a recently acquired and past copper gold producer in Chile. Also, BMR is the largest mineral claim holder in a historic cobalt silver camp in Ontario. It's time to follow BMR's five-prong approach to unlock shareholder value in the timely clean energy sector. This Clean Energy Minute has been sponsored by Battery Mineral Resources, U.S. trading symbol BTRMF, and in Canada, BMR. Web address, bmrcorp.com. The preceding may contain forward-looking statements which may not be realized.